Welcome to a new video in my home automation series. Recently I said I'm going to play a little bit more with Meshtastic and um, right before that, or well, obviously when this idea was uh, or, um, already you know, set in stone, I received an email from Alecro. If I want to look at any of their Meshtastic compatible products, and they have actually loads of them. There is a lot of different uh, you know, ESP-based devices which has you know, different size of screens, more like you know, DIY options and a lot of connection uh, you know, options for external sensors and devices. But they also have these, you know, Think Note series. Actually, there are three different devices. This is the M2, but there is an M1 and the M5, and I'm going to show a little comparison a little bit later in this video. And this is probably the most inexpensive version of the three. And as you can see, it is a self-contained unit. It has everything that you need in order to get started with mesh testing, especially if you want, just want to play around, you want to invest a little bit of money so you can see how this system works, what you can do with it. Because as I said, it has everything. It has an ESP32S3 chip. It has a small screen, so you can use the screen uh, to read messages. It has a battery, it has antenna. It's a nice self-contained screen. The only thing you get is obviously the a little bit of LED beside the screen. You have a USB port uh, for charging and a reset hole. I mean, of course, the USB is also to flash the firmware and then two buttons on the side, one power button and one function button. And with this unit, you can just explore the mesh testing network. You, you can use it at home. You can take it into the city, just move around, see what other nodes you will find, how, which you know, network you can connect to. Is there any mesh testing network, you know, other nodes and repeaters in your area? You can send and receive messages through your mobile phone. So, you know, it has the full functionality and you get all the experience of mesh testing with this single device as you get with, you know, any other. In terms of the box and the packaging, it comes in a very smart package. So it's a nice, uh, you know, sleeve and it comes in this plastic container uh, with a lot of, uh, you know, wrapping uh, just to make sure it doesn't get damaged in shipping. You also get a nice uh, USB A to USB C cable for charging and a small documentation, which really, I mean, it's just like, you know, like a two pages of quick, quick start guide, which takes you through the you know, the functions and, uh, you know, some of the specific, uh, the, you know, the internals and everything. And in terms of the functionality and the use, you see that, uh, as I said, you have like two different buttons on the side. So you can use the, uh, the on off button. If you long press it, then that's how you turn it on and turn it off. And if you are only, you know, if you press it once, then it's going to dim the screen or turn off the screen and you can wake it up with the other function button. And then a single press on the function button cycles through all, uh, each of the pages. So it shows all the nodes that are visible. And there is this status page in Meshtastic as well. And and, uh, um, well, that's a log page and probably this is the status page, which shows you the battery voltage and, you know, channel utilization and uptime. I have done some limited testing on this and I think in an ideal condition, this battery lasts up to eight hours. Ideal condition means that it was on my desk here, which means that I haven't used it so much. So it wasn't receiving and transmitting a lot of messages and the screen was also off most of the time, but then it lasted for eight hours. So I think typically you would expect less, especially if you are using the device, uh, you know, uh, sending and receiving messages because then the radio would be working uh, a bit more. Although there are other, you know, mesh testing nodes in my house. So they have, must have sent, you know, updates and telemetry messages with, uh, the, which this guy had received. But again, eight hours is the maximum. The other functions of the buttons is that if you press it twice uh, quickly, then it sends a, uh, a like a ping message, which I think on this screen you should be able to see. Yeah, ad hoc node info is sent. So that was when I double pressed it. And when I uh, three press it, then it, it starts like an alarm message, which the, uh, the unit starts to beep and it beeps like, um, you know, free longs and free shorts and again, free long and free shorts. So yeah, um, that's, uh, you know, how you would send an R message. 
and maybe well, I haven't mentioned some of the obvious stuff there is a like a lanyard connection here the antenna is built in it's not removable and you have two M2 screws at the back so if you want to attach some accessories maybe there would be a, it would be possible to 3d print a belt clip or you know maybe some other velcro mounts you can use those two um, heat set in threaded inserts to mount that and as I mentioned, this unit is self-contained and it even comes with mesh testing installed from the factory. So literally, you, when you receive the product, uh, the battery would be always uh, also charged to some extent. So all you need to do uh, is, you know, turn it on and, and then it's working. And then you take your mesh testing app uh, on your phone and then uh, if you see, um, well, in the connection page, I have already named mine as like a Node M2, but you will find a new device there and then you can connect to it. And uh, if you, oops, if you look at my, you know, I have some text messages as well, but these are the various nodes that uh, I can see in my network. So I have two other devices at home, which is the Wi-Fi and the sensor node, which I did talk about in the, you know, the previous mesh testing video that I did, but that's my M2. So you can see that this uh, specific hardware is supported by mesh testing. So it knows that what node this is in. And uh, yeah, you can see, you know, device metrics, seeing, um, and signal metrics and if I go some time back uh, then you see how I used it so that was the initial time when I used it um, you see how the battery voltage was going down so I used for like seven hours and then one additional hour and then here um, it was mostly plugged in and it was unplugged for a short period of time so that's how you can see that the you know there was some battery drainage and then you can see some of the channel utilization and you know messages sent and received so yeah so when i received the node obviously the first thing that i had to do is in the settings and under laura i had to uh, set the uh, you know the laura parameters the name of the device and the frequency sorry that is under radio configuration and uh, and user id and that actually the screen is going to tell you that you have to do that so you give it a name and then you set the frequency because i think this model probably supports multiple frequencies so you have to set the one which is uh, applicable in the area the only other thing i have changed uh, on this model is that on the external notification i think i had this neck timeout set to 60 which meant that if a message was received it was like you know beeping for 60 seconds i modified it to 10 and you can see that you can also configure a ringtone because this device also has a buzzer and that buzzer uh, accepts or can play any of these ringtone symbols or ringtone messages. So that's how you can, um, you know, configure a ringtone. And if you search online, you find a lot of websites which explain how this ringtone format works. And you can also find some example ringtones if you want to switch that or change it to something else. This is the default that comes with mesh testing. And in the meantime, I'm logged into one of my other nodes on my computer. So I'm just going to uh, send a message from another mesh testing node, which is around the house. And the message is sent. So that's the chirp that you can hear. And that's going to go on for 10 seconds. And you can see that the message is right on my phone as well. So that was the other ping. And you can see this is the uh, the message in the long fast primary channel. And you also see some, you know, signal ratio and their SSI. But again, uh, in for this, I'm just basically testing uh, between the nodes that I have at home. And as I said in my previous mesh testing videos, I'm just playing around with this mesh testing system also using for sensor data. I am not in an area of the city where there is a lot of other public repeaters. So I haven't really received any public messages from other users so I'm mainly testing it at home around the house which means that I haven't really been able to uh, you know test the uh, transmit and receive capability of this antenna it is definitely working without any issues in my sort of like close area but uh, to see how it performs in in the open or like in a city environment I don't have any information yet 
And I wanted to quickly show you Alecro's website as well, since I was to, talking about three different products. And uh, I had like a $20 price for this guy in my mind. And uh, until I started looking at the, uh, the listing a little bit more in details, when I realized that you can buy a version which is just a PCB in itself, which is actually $21.19. But if you want a case just like the one I, I received, which I think it's a really good case, it's not 3D printed, it's like a nice injection mold, it's the case then obviously it becomes uh, 43.90 so i thought it is much cheaper than some of the other models but uh, actually with the case it the, the price is more more or less comparable and i want to scroll down all the way to the comparison of the different models so as i said you can buy like three different models the m1 and the m5 and the m2 and the well the main difference for me is that the m1 and the m5 it has an e-ink display which I think there are obviously pros and cons. The probably the pro is uh, if you want to keep one single information on the screen, then obviously the e-ink doesn't consume any power while the screen is stationary. And also the e-ink screen is slightly bigger. So you can see, I mean, although the resolution uh, is lower, so 200 by 200 as opposed to uh, 128 by 64 but the you know the physical size is bigger so this one has a 1.3 inch screen and that one has a 1.54 so yeah you can see the difference and uh, I think the other big difference for me is that the M1 and the M5 has a GPS chip in, uh, built inside it so obviously it's going to be more expensive so this is why sort of like this is the budget entry model if you want to get into mesh testing and uh, I mean, technically, there are a lot more differences. As you can see, the M5 also contains an ESP32. The M1 contains a Nordic. I mean, if you are only using it for, um, you know, for mesh testing network, to be honest, I don't think it really matters which chip you are using because both of them are supported by, uh, with mesh testing, so you get exactly the same functionality. I think the Nordic probably uh, uses less power, so obviously the M1 is, is going to last longer than the M5. But if you want to, you know, play with your uh, own firmware or if you want to make modifications, then it is definitely easier to write your own firmware for the ESP32. So that's probably is going to go towards the, either the M M2 or the M5. And obviously the, you know, the Nordic chip has no Wi-Fi in it. But if you are planning to use this as a workaround, uh, you know, as like a bulk about LoRa transmitter, probably you are only going to use LoRa and not the Wi-Fi and the LoRa chip and the transceivers are the same so they are using the same SX1262 uh, module. But other than that I think the rest of the specs are comparable and again if you just want to have a better understanding of what these units are then you know that's the M2 that we looked at and that's the M1 and the M5. And you can see the differences in pricing. And let me just check if the M1 also comes with two different, yeah. So again, if you buy it with, uh, with a case, which I would definitely do, then it becomes, you know, 50 quid. So still the M2 is about 10 quid cheaper with a case than the M1. But again, for example, if you want to use tracking, definitely go with either the M1 or the M5, which has the built-in GPS. And this pretty much concludes my review of this Alacro ThinkNode M2. I think it's a nice little device. It's definitely easy to work with. It's easy to start the whole mesh testing experience with this device. And of course it doesn't uh, cost a lot of money to get started and you still get a mobile, you know, battery powered uh, device that you, you know, once you unbox it, you just need to switch on connect to the app and you are ready to go. If you are interested in this device, there are going to be purchasing links in the video description, but I think that's all going to be for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next one.